Hi everyone. We're now going to be talking about JavaScript. This will be a quick introduction to the main parts of the JavaScript programming language and we'll be using it to do some basic importing into the page. So JavaScript is not like CSS or HTML, the other two programming technologies that we learned in the last few videos, because unlike HTML and CSS, which probably didn't feel a lot like something like Python or Java, JavaScript is an actual programming language, which means we define functions, we define variables, we can call functions, so on and so forth. So the first thing that we need to know about JavaScript is how to actually put it in our page. So JavaScript is another thing we import, so we'll import it into the head. And the way that you make a JavaScript page is by actually creating a file and saving it as .js. So I'm going to call this index.js. So now we have our JavaScript file. Um, what we want to do is basically import it into the HTML. So when we imported CSS, we used this link tag. Now when we import JavaScript, we're going to use something called the script tag. So you write it by typing script. And you want to do a closing tag as well. And then you basically indicate which file to upload by the source attribute, src. And so like in the, in the CSS, it was href. Here it's src. And so we're just going to write index.js. And so this should actually import the JavaScript into our page. Another JavaScript thing that we should be importing, um, actually, which we'll do later, are things like bootstrap.js as well as jQuery, which we'll talk about later. So now we have our basic JavaScript file in here. Um, now in order to actually run, so like we said, JavaScript is a programming language, but it's unique because it's a programming language which is run in the browser. So this is why JavaScript is used by everyone to do web development, because it's the programming language for the internet. Now if we want to actually do something like have um, a console, then if we inspect element, we can also go to the console. And here we actually have something where we can type in instructions in JavaScript. So for instance, I can define a variable x equals 5. And I can use it. And I can do like x plus 5, x times 10, so on and so forth. So basically, um, as you can see, JavaScript is just like any other programming language. Now, the key to JavaScript is that it is what we call an event-based programming language. What this means is that essentially, like I said earlier in the previous videos, JavaScript defines how we interact with the page. So when I click on this button, or on this button, or when I hover over these links, that's all defined in the JavaScript because it's the user doing something which changes how the page behaves. So what we're going to do in JavaScript is define functions which are called when certain events happen. Just like in, um, in 112 when we have our event-based programming, we define what happens when a mouse press happens, and then every time a mouse is pressed on our game, it'll call the mouse press function. So exactly the same is how JavaScript works. So let's look at how to do some basic programming things. So at the basic level, let's say we want to define a function. In JavaScript, you do it by typing in function, the name of the function, so I'll call it my function, argument list, and then you put it all in the brackets. So the syntax for this is very much like Java or C, so if, you've, if you're familiar with those programming languages, then it's something very similar. However, for actually defining things like variables, it's much closer to Python. Because in Java and C, you have to do something like say int x equals 5, and then string uh, s equals hello. It turns out that in JavaScript, you have to define your variables by putting something here. But instead of putting the type of the variable, you just put var. This indicates to JavaScript that you're defining a new variable. You can also put variables globally, like x, let's say var y equals 7, um, and then just use them inside of your functions. But if you want to change the global variable, you just do y plus equals x, or something like that, and it'll modify the global. Now, in order to do if statements, all we do is type in if, or if, then we'll say if y is greater than 11, then we put it inside the brackets. Then we'll say maybe uh, 10 plus, we'll say, how about s plus equals, yay. Additionally, one thing that you want to do in JavaScript is to do print statements. 
So instead of to doing print, it's called console.log. This is awesome. And it'll basically print out to the console in our browser. So we'll see later how um, we can use that to actually do things like debugging. So we have we have variables, we have functions, we have if statements. Now let's actually use for loops. So to do a for loop, you start out with for. Then you need to have three parts. Define the for loop variable, so int i equals zero. Then say what condition must be true to keep going, so while i is less than 10. And then say what should we do to the for loop variable at each iteration of the for loop. So I'm going to say add one to i, i plus plus. i plus plus is the same thing as i equals i plus one. It's just shorthand to add one to the variable. And then we put the brackets and basically do whatever we want in the for loop. So I'm going to do console.log. This for loop works great. OK, cool. So, so far, we've called a function. We've defined a function, variables, if statements, for loops, global variables. So remember, we imported this into our page, and we're printing out to the console. So the only thing we have to do now is call this function, which I'll do here, my function. And when I run this code, huh, notice how it says we got a syntax error. So that's another really good point, that whenever you have errors in your JavaScript, it's the question is, where do I see my print statements and where do I see the like compilation errors? It all happens in the console inside of the developer tools of your browser. So it's saying that on line 14, there was a syntax error. Aha, so remember how I said that we use var instead of int? So now, if I go and run this, then notice how it printed out, this is awesome, and then it printed out 10 times, this for loop works great, which is good because we had a for loop run 10 times. So as you can see, we have just done a basic introduction to JavaScript. Um, it's just like any other programming language if you've used something like Python or Java before. And as we'll see in the next video, JavaScript is very useful for interacting with the different elements on the page so we can define how the user actually uses it. So that's what we'll be doing in the next video. And yeah, this was just an intro to JavaScript.